Graham, would you be up for completely legalising drugs? A chicken, yes, I would. I worked in the drugs uh, industry for years as a support worker. Let me just clarify that. Uh, I am not. I am not admitting on camera that I've dealt drugs. <laughs> But I help people get clean. Um, and that includes alcohol as well. I was a, specifically an alcohol worker. I think I did that for 11 months. Uh, the place I'd moved from was mostly heroin and crack. Um, and that was hardcore, baby. That was that was horrible. I used to have to... Um, all the methadone was locked up. We had to... Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. Anyway. Um, yeah, I've seen what it does, man. And I... I, do, I, I, I I think it should be legally legalized because people are going to do it anyway. I mean, look at fucking Spice. They made it illegal, and now everyone's taking it because it was is the Streisand effect, isn't it? Everyone's like, oh, it became a thing then. Um, I would say though, you know, it needs to be legal, but I don't think it'll that'll be the end of it because California just legalized uh, weed on a massive scale, but California did what most governments do, which was regulate the fuck out of it. So if you're someone who's been growing weed for years, suddenly you needed three different licenses. You know, permits. It, it was insane. And I don't think we'd do it as bad as that. But the issue is, legalising weed would solve a lot of issues, including crime and antisocial stuff associated with it. But it would create a lot more problems as well. And actually, the, the evidence there with California is a lot of people are going back to doing it illegally they're growing illegally and they're selling illegally because there's so much regulation and taxes and red tape and burdens that <coughs> they can't do it anymore you know they get the that that's that's the issue with legalization regulation is um it makes it that much harder for a small business it's it, the, the it's statism isn't it it's protecting the big one and it, it'll be exactly the same as it has been with the vape companies being bought up by all the tobacco companies uh very very soon there would just be big cannabis they'd be you know be, be marlboro would just own it because they have the legal teams required to do all the the red tape to do all the policy to you know get through all the fucking paperwork and all that shit to pay the fees all that shit that gets added on that they themselves that the big companies themselves have lobbied for the way they did it with cannabis and what really fucked cannabis up and what people weren't expecting and it's happened in this country too because everyone's like legally legalize weed man it's just a, it's just a plant they legalized it and brought it in as a medicine that's how they legalized it. And that's what's happened here. Um, even if it's for personal use, um, it's still classed as medical, uh, a medical supply, which means if I wanted to grow a rose and sell it, it's not necessarily going to be checked for like hairs, animal hairs, for dirt, for everything, you know, the dirt that would be on the ground where it came up. But once you've classed weed as a medicine, the standards and the checking are way higher. And that's what fucks people over. So your mate that grows a few bushes in his attic, uh, he's gone because he can't afford the medical testing. He can't afford to send it off all the time. He can't afford to ensure that every single thing that goes out hasn't got a single uh, hair or, you know, anything in it whatsoever. And that's, that's what fucks it. So, you know, in theory, yes, I'd like legalisation. But I don't think it's going to help anything. I really, really don't. Uh, trigger warning has said, dealer with eight kids on mountain bikes working for him. All oh, these ladies were very poorly, though. Mate! I moved away from that years ago. I'm a pimp these days. Portugal, all drugs are legal. Yes, that's great. Yeah, and good, good. I, I, I really, I really, I think ultimately, I think it should be. But as with leaving the EU, I think eventually it will happen, but for the wrong reasons and in the wrong manner, you know? Uh, I, I, I think drugs should be legal because that way they can be clean, they can be safe. And when you, the best example is when you go to buy alcohol, there's everything from those 3%, you know, foreign beer, you know, the imported beers, the little bottles, all the way up to absinthe. And you know what you're getting. Clearly, you know what you're getting. Um, and I think we could do with that in the drugs industry too. People are going to do it no matter what. No matter what. So let's make it safe. Let's take all the, the weird things that they cut with it out of it and all the rest of it. And make it legal in the sense... I mean, dude, I, 
I, I, I don't even think the smoking ban should have come in, you know? Here's the thing. Here's the example with this, right? Smoking ban just killed loads of pubs. Reduced their thing because the government came in and created one rule for everyone. And that's what had happened with legalised drugs. Um, at the time, and I remember when the smoking ban came in, at the time, more and more pubs were going non-smoking by choice. The free market was making that decision. If you if you if you wanted to be a bartender, because that was the argument, wasn't it? Bar staff were subjected to it. And it's like ultimately, you know, if you can find minimum wage work elsewhere. But either way, with the with the pressure that was on for the smoking ban, pubs more and more pubs were going non smoking. So they were choosing. Let the market decide. Let you as a person, whether you want to work there or not, decide also. It's up to you, isn't it? And we would have found a balance there. You can smoke there. This place is smoking. This place is non-smoking. The government just went, no. Everything. No. Non-smoking everywhere. Fucked over loads of places. Loads of places closed. Now, is the is, is pubs going in the other direction? Do you remember when they used to close at 11? I do. All pubs closed at 11. It was the fucking law. And it was strict. And I used to work in a kitchen. And we also closed at 11. And I used to have to walk onto the bus stop. And it was a motherfucking war zone. Every night. Because because you knew you knew last orders was coming. So you'd buy three pints and just hammer them. So by midnight. There was an actual army of pissed up psychos everywhere. And, and to be honest. If you were wankered yourself. It was great fun. It was great. It was like New Year's Eve every night, but it was a stress on the police. It was a stress on medical services, you know, obviously the ambulances and all that. So what did the government do? They allowed pubs to close whenever they wanted. They gave them the choice. They gave them the freedom to decide. And what have we got now? It's quiet. I bike home from Trigger Warning at midnight. And yeah, there's, pe there's pissed people everywhere. But it's all staggered. It's all whenever they want. Pub closes at midnight, 1am, 2am. Some of them stay open all damn night. And that's their choice. And that's the difference, man. And it's had a positive effect. I mean, the positive effect being that the Tories can fire even more police officers and get away with it. Because they're not needed as much. <laughs> Unintended consequences. So that's the thing, man. Give businesses more freedom. Let them decide. And we have positive effects. Because you're letting the individual person decide for themselves. The government decides from above, one rule for all, places closed. People are unhappy. Um, and of course, the oh, don't get me started on that bullshit. Let's just chat the uh, chats before we move on. <laughs> when weed was like, this is Bob Stew, sorry. When weed was made legal in Colorado, there was so much cash coming in. Sellers had to hire armed security, which brings problems too. Yeah, do you know what, mate? I wouldn't mind having that problem. I got so much money. <laughs> I need a dude at the door. <laughs> Uh, I know what you're saying, but you know it. You know, getting sick of winning. I, I I'd rather be sick of winning than put in prison for thirty days for being caught with a pipe, which happened to someone I know in D.C. Actually, Washington D.C. And it was a big deal, man, because the dude. Um, I'm not going to say any specifics, but he worked, you know, in hospitals and stuff, and not not a porter, like a legit. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of a bad one because he got he didn't even have any weed on him. It's just a pipe, you know, one of those little pipes. Thirty days crazy uh when holland legalized weed number of te teenagers partaking dropped by 20 percent. well yeah we you know you take the mystery out of it don't you and you own the thing is we saw this in monkeys right uh there's a there's an a uh, where is it i can't remember if it's spain or there's a certain resort somewhere and on the side of it there's a load of monkeys that live there yeah hundreds of them and they come in and they steal people's drinks. You've probably seen the funny videos of them doing it. Now, what they did was they did a, an experiment. They checked the monkeys to see how many of them became alcoholics. And how many of them like beers and um, spirits and all the rest of it. And they, they actually checked the demographics that you know how it splits up and they found that the same number of the same proportion of monkeys that became alcoholics is the same was the same as humans i can't remember the number now but i remember this from doing my alcohol work and not only that 
the the split of preferences. Obviously, at first a monkey would just try whatever drink they wanted, but uh, but then the split of preferences for beer, wine, cider, all that, um, cocktails was the same as humans. It matched alcohol sales as well. It was crazy, and it was like they they. They they're not they're not subject to advertising and all those whims and all that other stuff. But there's something in there where even fucking monkeys are gonna a certain number of them are gonna become addicts because they have that deficiency with them and you know they have that lack of strength or whatever. And um, the same thing happens for humans, then. You know they they're gonna be addicts no matter what, man. So why fucking criminalize them? Why put all that stress on the system? Why give gangs power, you know? I, I mean, when, when they legalised weed in America, in parts of America, it just it completely fucked over the people south of the border that were doing it. It was ridiculous. They're, they're importing it now. Um, a Chicken says strains need to be below a certain percentage of, of TNC for them to be considered medical grade because THC has been proven to be damaging. But that's the thing, though, man. Alcohol's damaging. Here's the thing with me. This is why I... I that's that's this is the issue though that's the problem if you're then you can't then grow it you have to constantly send stuff off and pay for it to be tested uh which is what annoys me because it's then protectionism for big business but it, it gives a shit though if it's damaging you know i i i, I can choose but i but i want to know as well i mean if i did start smoking weed again i just want the sort of the old man chilled stuff you know, that's all I'd want. I wouldn't want to go crazy. Little Glob, oh, I love Little Glob, has said, Spice affects the prison officers now. Criminals are smoking it without tobacco. It made one officer blind for a day. <laughs> uh, I saw a friend of mine recently, sat with all the Spice heads in town, and I was very, very, very disappointed. Very disappointed. Um... It really frustrated me. Guys, uh, Streamlabs, PayPal, Patreon... Obviously, Super Chats as well. I adore Super Chats. Please, 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 if you can support the show. I've got until September to... Get, basically, I've been a stay-at-home dad for, you know, the last four years now. Uh, well, no, the first year I was working nights, which was horrible. I'd come back after a 12-hour shift and take the baby. <laughs> I just need to sleep. Uh, but once she was well enough, it's a long story, but education, she, she, her work were paying for her to get a qualification. So it was one of them of like, you know, if you, if you look at income over your entire life, it makes sense for me to stay here doing all this flappy shit. She's going to be in school soon. So it's either me going back to the council, if they'll have me, <laughs> or uh, doing this every day. So that's the thing. Please, please drop us a super chat. Please drop us a PayPal, all the rest of it. Although, I won't know if you do a PayPal right now, because it'll go straight to Hayden. He looks after all of it. And guys, once again, this is a preview for our new website. It's not quite there yet, but it's getting there. He's building it. Um, look, there's the chart there, the rules and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, it's still in beta, but we are getting there. It's going to be absolute it'll be amazing. You're going to adore it. And not just that, this, you will be able to do this bit here. This will be you. You can do this. I mean, obviously, there's no point putting ads on it right now. We're, if, if we start getting a million hits a week, then fuck yeah, let's put some ads on there and we'll share it with you, you know? We'll do that. But at the moment, when it's just a few thousand a week, which is still amazing, but when it's a few thousand a week, we're not we're not going to put ads on there. We'd rather just do it. it we, I Just sharing information with one another, just sharing perspective with one another is more valuable than you making 10p for, you know, do you know what I mean? And us being, um, and us having that weakness then and that vulnerability, you know, because ads are a vulnerability, of course they are. 